So welcome to the Cora Lynn Waterfall. This is in a place called New Lanark. I think this is in total about six hours, 46 hours for the whole walk. But um, I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm literally just coming to shoot this waterfall. And I'm going to go up to the Horseshoe Waterfall and shoot that as well. So this waterfall is also known as the Falls of Clyde, which is a very, very famous probably shot far too much waterfall but I thought it was still worth coming to have a look at anyway because I've never actually been here before so the competition I've got in Mum is actually a portrait competition and then I also switched to a, land, a landscape uh, format as well and the reason for that is because I wanted to just catch the bottom layer of the waterfalls which are down there I've got them sort of off to the sides I'll show that photograph in a minute and I've got a polarizer on because I noticed when I was spinning the polarizer that I'm actually captured in more detail um, by cutting out some of that bright white water it actually looks really really nice and it's not in full space you can see this is normally um, I'll show you the, the signpost that's what it normally looks like so it's normally pretty um, white you can you can never really see as much detail in the waterfalls as you can see today so I've got this photograph taken already um, let's see where is it So the other thing I had to do is you'll notice my tripod is slightly wonky and um, there's a reason for that. So the bottom tier of the waterfall is at almost, I would say a 20 degree angle going down the way like that and the top half is perfectly straight. So to try and compensate for the bottom half to try and make it look a little bit straighter, I've literally just squinted my lens a little bit, which it doesn't totally straighten up but I think it works fine for just now so we're going to continue up to the next part which is the horseshoe and I'm quite excited to see what that looks like because I've got a wide angle lens with me as well and I should mention this walk is very steep so um lugging a big tripod and a, a 7 to 200 mil lens probably wasn't the brightest idea I've had today but um yeah still lovely to come out it's very grey we were actually forecast for thunderstorms today so fingers crossed we get some of that on the way back So I've walked a three quarters of a mile down to this bit here and uh, this is supposed to be the horseshoe waterfalls as you can see it's a bit underwhelming unfortunately that's just what happens when you shoot waterfalls sometimes they're ferocious and sometimes they're a trickle so this seems to be a trickle there is a viewpoint on the other side of the the walk which gives you a perfect view of that waterfall as you can see behind me there but um to be honest that's not exactly a huge kind of grand waterfall I was looking for I think I've already had that down at the the Corlin. so so I'm gonna abandon this location and move to location number two so yeah let's move out this misty rain and uh, go for the two mile walk back to the car yeah let's get moving and see what else we can find So as you probably noticed, it's raining, but it's not just any type of rain. This is my absolute favorite type of rain to shoot in. Now, I know most photographers aren't too fond of rain and I understand why it ruins your gear, ruins everything. Sometimes you get like water spots on your lens. It's not ideal, but thankfully there are things in place now to help us deal with that sort of situation. You've got water resistant lenses. You've got really awesome uh, lens covers. You can get off eBay and stuff now. So um, really good waterproof clothing, which I highly recommend. Although I forgot my boots, so trainers a go go so what I've just done is I've taken an absolutely stunning shot straight through there this is a place called Dollar Glen and uh, I found this on Instagram when I was looking for places to look for near Falkirk I just fancy trying this part of Scotland so I've never been here before so I don't know if you can see that a bit better in there maybe possibly let's see how far and I can get yeah. so that is the waterfall I was shooting and it's beautiful there's another one just there but I've not I've not explored that yet so yeah so I was saying I was shooting with the Manfrotto the baby one today but the big one's obviously not a carbon fiber one and it weighs a ton I didn't, didn't realize yesterday I hadn't done my research properly so the hike yesterday was a bit more than I expected and I've hurt my back 
from carrying a tripod and all the gear and a 7200mm lens. So today I'm traveling light. I have the Manfrotto B3 tripod, which is a, a really cheap alternative just for this sort of stuff. Goes down really low, excellent for shooting waterfalls. Um, cost me about, I think it was about £60 retail price for it. So it's a really cheap, lightweight, weighs absolutely nothing tripod, but it's sturdy enough that it's not going to move when it's in the water. So I'm really impressed with it, really like it. So I've got that as my, my sort of uh, my hiking tripod. So yeah, this is a place called Dollar Glen. It's an absolutely beautiful place to come. It's paradise. I will be continuing down the gorge to see what other waterfalls we can get though. Um, but if not, I'll show you this picture, which I took about 10 minutes ago. And the beauty of this is I was actually shooting in a, with a bulb exposure. So I think I was shooting for about 45 seconds and then bracketing the exposure to get the detail back in the waterfall, which, um, yeah, I think it's turned out absolutely beautiful. So I'm really, really happy with it. And um, it reminds me a little bit of Finnick Glen. This, as far as landscape topic goes, is fantastic. Because you can come here when it's bucketing down and still get some beautiful images and the reason for that is because all that rain is perfect for shooting and you're saturating all that moss you're saturating everything all the leaves are well i'm also getting soaked here but all the leaves are just a beautiful vibrant color and i think you can only get that when you're shooting in this type of rain so yeah moral of story if it's raining go somewhere that looks like this because you'll not be disappointed to do one of these uh, studio bits. I was out at Dollar Glen and um, I walked down to the, the other viewpoint but um, obviously the the growth is quite full at the moment so I couldn't really see anything. So I decided to walk back up to the car to look at the mist and see what that was looking like and I did have a wee wander about but I couldn't really see a sort of clear cut image that I wanted to try and shoot in the mist um, apart from the sort of high up sort of vantage point ones where you're sort of looking down on the, the sort of forest and stuff like that and it's more of a sort of general look how cool this mist is photo rather than a faux. So yeah, I've um, just wanted to wrap up the vlog here um, just very quickly and just to say as well that I think the shoot that I did in Dollar Glen especially because of how the conditions turned out I was hoping that because that we had thunderstorms forecast um, for that day as well, that we would have um, potential for mist. And it was there in abundance, it was absolutely beautiful. So I'm hoping that some of the photographs might not show how dense the mist was, but they certainly show what it brings to a scene. And it, it certainly, so I, I feel like it sort of just brings it alive and it makes it look absolutely fantastic. Apparently there's a whole site um, next to the castle, which is a castle, it's one of the Castle Campbell ones. Um, there's a whole site there that I haven't explored yet. There was a map and the map showed you another path that goes down to another side of the castle, which takes you into a different part of the glen, which would just be stunning to go back and visit. So that's definitely somewhere I'm going to go back and have a look at again. Thoroughly enjoyed the walk again. I've done two sort of hikes in two days. So I think as I said in the first video, my tripod the first day was not suitable for that sort of hike. So carrying this here and the heavy man throttle tripod was not ideal. So I switched it out for the, I left that at home and I switched it out for the lightweight man throttle, which I said in the video, and it made such a difference. My back's not anywhere near the sort of day. So, so I think I'm going to look at different tripods that I can try and find a good all rounder. Um, don't get me wrong, the man throttle is ideal, but for winter conditions, when there's heavy winds and stuff, it's not probably as strong enough as I was like. So I'm on the hunt for a lightweight tripod, roughly about the same size as Manfrotto, roughly just as third day as a Manfrotto, but just a bit lighter weight. I know the carbon fiber ones are really good, but I'm, I'm sure since even they've come out, there's other tripods on the market now. So if you have any suggestions for ones I should look at or you've tried test drive, then um, leave them in the comments and I'll have a wee look at them. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've managed to come away with a couple of images that I've really enjoyed taking pictures of, especially the one from Dollar Glen. I had to place them myself because there was nobody there because of the rain. And it was just a beautiful, peaceful place to go and it was lovely and I could have sat there all day. So next week we've got uh, a bit of a camping situation happening and I'm very excited about it because it's the first proper camp I've done. So next week I'm going camping and I'm going to take you with me and I'm going to shoot two different locations about five or six miles from each other. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video and uh, if you like this video, then like and subscribe and until next week, I'll see you soon. Bye.